our last segment this month, we're featuring a local business owner who has transformed a traditional craft into a mischievous and clever means of modern expressionism. Pin and Needle Embroidery Designs was created by Polk County native Lindsay Venrig, who quit her job to pursue her passion for needlework full time. Here's a look at the stylish, subversive artwork of Lindsay Venrig. Hi, I'm Lindsay Venrig. I'm the owner and operator of Pin and Needle Embroidery Designs. I hand stitch embroidered artwork and apparel, and I also make DIY kits and I teach DIY classes so that I can teach other people how to do cross stitch and embroidery. My mom taught me how to cross stitch when I was like eight years old and I would do little projects with her as she was working on her big projects. The first piece that I made was this little Noah's Ark, <laughs> just a little boat with like a couple little animals on it. And my mom found it when she moved and she gave it back to me and I honestly I impressed myself. <laughs> it's like wow I can't believe that I did this well when I was a kid. And I tell that story to new people that I'm teaching so that they can be confident that, you know, hey, if this eight-year-old girl could finish this, then I can definitely finish this project. It doesn't take a lot to get started. I tell people, if you can count to 10 and you have a little bit of patience, then you can cross stitch. That's really it. Um, patience is the main thing that you need, and I know people can struggle with that. Um, we offer kits and we offer classes that come with full sets of instructions, all of the materials that you need. You really just need fabric, embroidery floss, and needles, and a pattern. Um, and if you watch a couple of YouTube videos or you attend one of my classes, you can see the how to do the stitches. It's very simple. Um, you count out your stitches, you, you know, one line at a time you go through. Um, it just all comes down to that patience. As long as you can be patient and count out your stitches, then you'll be able to master it. People have been cross-stitching and embroidering since like medieval times um, and we want to keep those skills alive. What's cool though now in modern times you can use them in so many different ways. You don't have to just stitch on a piece of fabric and stick it in a hoop. You can embroider onto your clothing, onto your hats. People, you know, they're um, tearing apart their jeans and adding embroidered patches. There's just so many new and unique ways that you can use it. It's not a skill that should be lost. Um, I, I know that embroidery is making a big comeback because there are these young people that they like the skill but they don't necessarily want to make um, an old-fashioned sampler with the alphabet on it. They want to make something cool so they're really pushing the art and the design and finding new ways to use these stitches and I just think it's important we keep it going. Yes, um, cross-stitching is super relaxing. Um, you can kind of Netflix and chill while you're cross-stitching. Um, as long as you're not watching something with subtitles, you can sit there and just, you kind of get lost in the motion of, you know, going back and forth. It's very soothing, very relaxing until you get knots or until you get off on your count and then maybe not so much relaxing. Um, but it's just very peaceful and quiet. Um, I also have seen a few people say it, take, it lets them get their aggression out because they're able to stab that piece of fabric a thousand times. So, you know, whatever purpose you have what, or you want to fill when you're stitching, you can do that. Um, I just love sitting back and relaxing and getting lost in my designs. Well, most often my goal is to make people laugh. Um, I love doing markets in person because people will come up to my booth, they think, oh, these are sweet little things, and then they start to read, and you can just see the look on their face, they start to giggle, some people get a little embarrassed. <laughs> like, I just love making people laugh with my artwork and being unexpected. Um, that's the majority of what I do, but I also do a lot of pet portraits and family portraits um, that make me feel really warm and fuzzy inside, and I hope that it makes the customer feel the same way. Um, some of my pieces have been used for wedding proposals, some have been used to commemorate, commemorate lost pets. Um, so there's the fun side and then there's also the heartwarming side. Um, I just, whatever side it is, I like to make a piece that that person can take home and feel that, you know, they're the only person that has this piece, it is special to them, um, and it can just be something unique for them to have in their home um, for their guests and their maybe even become an heirloom you know for their children to to keep in the future i'm a perfectionist when i'm making a piece i i do stress about how good is this how photorealistic is it you know um and i've had to learn customers aren't as much of a perfectionist as i am for the most part when they get a portrait of their pet 
they see their pet. You know, if I had a whisker in a wrong place, they don't see that. They see their pet, they see the smile or the eyes, you know, they see those characteristics of their pet. My pet portraits are definitely my most popular item and I love making them. Um, those, they're pretty complicated to make. A customer will send me a photo of their pet and I bring it into my program for pattern design and I have to basically redo the picture in cross stitch method and I've got to select the exact colors of the fur and you put little white in the eye to give it that glimmer. You know, there's just so many little details involved with the pets, um, but man, when they're done, they look so cool. I mean, you can just see, you just see the pet in the stitching. It's, it's super cool. So another popular item that I do are the family portraits. Uh, where people will send me pictures of their family or wedding day or you know whatever they want the family portrait of um, and it's kind of like paper dolls you know like I start with just the the base of the person and then I get to design their outfits I get to design their hairstyles you get to really cater every detail of these people um, to create these special uh, family portraits and those those are my probably second most popular item um, I they're given a lot for wedding gifts housewarming gifts new baby announcements um, I, the family portraits are just so fun because you really get to customize their general like caricatures but with the hairstyles and the clothing and everything you get to bring each person to life I was working a full-time job and this was just a side business you know if somebody bought something on Etsy great I would take the weekend to make their order and you know send it on its way and then I would started taking on markets and then my Etsy picked up and everything just started to be so busy that I just didn't really have time for my full-time job anymore um, so it was kind of terrifying but just kind of seemed right that it was time to take a leap of faith and put all of my effort into this business and that was about a year and a half ago this keeps me busy, you know, I don't want to sugarcoat it. It is a 24 seven job. When you have an online store, people will message you at 9 p.m. and they expect a response at 9.01. So it really is a full-time job. I work harder than I've ever worked in my life. Um, but in my work, I'm making things that I like to make. I'm talking to people who understand my art and appreciate what I do. Um, so it's very rewarding and it just makes all the work worth it. The art scene around here is just growing rapidly. Um, thankfully, we've got new businesses around that are really supporting the arts. Like in Winter Haven, we've got Grove Roots that have started ho hosting a monthly art market. Lakeland has the Creative Makers Group, um, so they're bringing artists together. Tampa and Orlando, of course, have always had a bigger art scene, but they're pulling artists from Winter Haven and Lakeland to show at their um, markets and shows. It's just crazy how much um, local businesses have really started to support and promote local makers. And once you start to get these makers out into the public, then you know the community starts to see, oh, I don't have to just go to TJ Maxx to buy my artwork. I can go to these other small businesses that I love and I can buy art from small business makers and put that in my home and have you know these one of a kind pieces of art in my home. It's the only way that our community is going to grow is by supporting the local small businesses and the local artists, um, by giving them the opportunity to do murals, to show their work around town. It just promotes community and it promotes the arts. It gives children you know, something to look up to, to see, oh wow, I can make this art and I can put it on the side of a building and my community is gonna support that. Um, it just helps our area stay unique and stay vibrant. Um, you know, we're growing and we don't want to turn into this commercialized conglomerate city. We want to still have that small town feel while growing and expanding. So by keeping it vibrant, by keeping it local, we're able to keep that small town feel. Keep up with the artwork of the pen and needle and order your own custom design by following Lindsay on Instagram. Just search for pin.needle.shop.